Hello again. Hello. We're back. It's not actually a different day. She just changed her makeup and I changed my hat. Jenna's going away, so we have to film a couple in the same day. Illusion broken. It's movie magic. What are we doing today? Another randomly picked video. We're gonna go visit Camp Caroline. tell you, Camp Caroline is located in the beautiful foothills of the Canadian Rockies, 85 kilometers southwest of Red Deer, Alberta. Mm. We're a 1.5 hour drive northwest from Calgary, Alberta, and a two hour drive southwest from Edmonton, Alberta. For 30 years, we have been <laughs> blending together the best of two worlds, ultra modern and rugged wilderness. Yay! I, this is from 2003, so I doubt it's going to be super modern. Ooh. We offer a huge variety of opportunities and activities for our summer campers. Are you ready to know why Camp Caroline exists? It exists to provide a personal understanding of the teachings of Christ. Uh. And so my prayer is, don't forget what you've learned, don't forget what God has taught you, and have a great year. As they impact individuals, relationships, and society, and to provide quality facilities and programs which will enhance spiritual, mental, physical, and social development. Because uh, you know all the people that are super Christian are socially developed so well. I want my God and I want my family. This is tainted. I don't want it. Whatever it is, it's tainted. Whatever it is you're giving me, I give it up to God. I'm a God warrior. And I don't want someone with tainted anything in beliefs doing anything with my family. Out. Yeah, Jesus Christ. I was so excited because I thought we're going to see some camp kids getting into some fun. But I thought now... it was going to be like bug juice. Yeah, now it's just going to be bug juice. Na, 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 na. Bug juice. Na, 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 na. You know that program? No. Oh. <laughs> there was a Newfoundland, or not a Newfoundland, there was a Canadian program that Wait. was like. Here's a clip of bug juice. Okay, carry on. What were you saying? The Newfoundland one? No, no, no. So, Bug Juice is whatever that was, and there is a Canadian... Bug Juice? Yeah, I can't really remember what it's called. It's like Camp Whatchamacallit or something. I don't know. I'll Google it later, and we'll come back to it. Camp Whatchamacallit? I don't know what it's called. You know, I never knew names were so important in canoeing. Uh... Thanks for your help, Frank. So I don't really know what else to say about this tape because on the back the rest of it is just the camp schedule and I think that would be camp very schedule. boring to read. 2003 to 2004. Oh okay, yeah, different years. Yeah, where is Caroline AB? We, don't, we live in this kind of region and I've never heard of Caroline e -A -B. Is it actually Caroline AB? Or yeah, Caroline Alberta. Alright, well, maybe we'll find out a little bit more about the region. In the tank. Why do you, why do they feel the need to like put so many like areas where it is? Yeah, there's a lot of descriptions. Southwest of Red Deer, one and a half hour drive northwest from Calgary, no. two hour drive from Edmonton. You know why they did that? It's because nobody knows where it is and they wouldn't know how to get there, so they have to give you very clear instructions of proximities to but other I'm places. I'm sure that they could have like just done one. Like people know where Edmonton is. People know where Calgary is. Just do one of those two. There's no reason to triangulate it with three. So, okay, yeah, you're going that way. So it's out there somewhere, towards BC. I'm trying to argue logic with crazy Christians. <laughs> the tapes, look at this. Look at this laziness. It's got like a side thing. What does it say? Camp Caroline, 789A2003. Oh, we've only got one part of it. What? Oh, we no. have got. So, grade 7, 8, July 13th to 19th. So we've got couple of days there. It doesn't say how long it is. It sounds a bit Australian. It doesn't sound how long it is, but it's got those big reels that means it's usually quite short. Thank you for that. Let's watch Camp Caroline. Oh, get off that horse. 
Oh my, oh my god. god. He knows the mistake he's made. <laughs> okay, I don't think. Is this all it's gonna be? Is this song playing over like footage? <sighs> I don't know. We're back. It was super short. Yay! <laughs> So what we're going to do is we're going to have another video, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, we should just get this out of the way quickly. <laughs> just a tape given to the campers, uh, the 789A grade campers. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it is. So you basically go to this camp for like a week and then you, learn about you braid God. hair and read the Bible on your own. And, <laughs> There's uh, lots of sitting by yourself. Kids at a Christian camp, I mean, you know, the jokes write themselves, I think. So basically the, the video literally just consisted of like a montage over Christian music of kids running around. That's basically what the whole tape was. And then there was two messages, one Mike Pastor saying, have a good year. And then right at the end it was the final words, but the tape was in such bad condition that it just kept cutting out so we couldn't even make so... heads or tails of it. Tape's getting low. Okay, go again. Okay, Sorry. hi campers. I hope you had a great week here at Junior High Camp. Uh, we just uh, we were had so much fun, and looking forward to seeing you back next year. Uh, don't forget the three points of our messages this week. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the right. Uh, always uh, give people frisbees. Give people frisbees. And play with dogs with frisbees. Never forget Paul. to uh, play with Paul. This week's train. And no lying. Lying is bad. Lying is bad. Unless you're sleeping, then you. That's right. Do, do not lie. Were you entertained? <laughs> I like the idea of it. I mean, I would have been entertained if I was in it or if I knew anyone in it. We could if we made friends but, in the greater Alberta region. No, nah, yeah, I don't really want to make friends with these people. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't entertaining. It was. It was like chewing gum. It's there for like a second and then it's gone. I get more enjoyment out of gum than that tape, I think. Yeah. Didn't serve its purpose. It was <laughs> it's... a memento for kids, yeah, sure. it was. It was a memento, although it was very short. I'm surprised they got every kid in there. I doubt they did. There's probably some sad kid who just never got in front of the camera or like Lauren, she's not in any of our school yearbook stuff at all. Like she did not exist in high school. She <laughs> might There you go. Should've done some extracurricular activity, shouldn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I didn't even have a yearbook. And we also don't have counts, I don't think. So um, yeah, we're gonna do another video anyway, that was the worst the better with us. Would we rewatch it? No. no. <laughs> Get rid of that Get tape. Rid of it. Hooray! Our next tape is. I'm excited because this is still sort of in the vein. Yeah, of we, like we Alberta. chose. We chose. Well, this one was actually a choice earlier on, but uh, we chose it now to do because it's yeah local. So it's the romantic restaurants of Edmonton. Welcome to the romantic restaurants of Edmonton. Sit back and enjoy the sights, sounds, and features of some of the best restaurants, not only in Edmonton, but in the world. And if we don't come away from this, with me going out to dinner at some point... I was thinking, we don't live in Edmonton, but I was thinking oh, this video would have been better. Oh my god, it comes with 15 gift certificates or something. They're gone. They're so long gone. Use them. This one's only 18 minutes as well. I was thinking we could, what we could have done is see we could have done a little, this video and then drove around Edmonton and see if these places Ooh. are still open. A visual tour of twelve special restaurants and cafes in the Edmonton area. Perfect. The video planning a romantic evening. Let the romantic restaurants of Edmonton video be your guide to choosing the perfect setting for your special night. This is from 2000. 2000. So... And the gift certificates are available, uh, are valid until 2001. So even if we have them, we're 17 we, years yeah. too late. <laughs> they might let us use it. Sometimes you see those things online where someone brings in an old McDonald's Happy Meal voucher <laughs> and they let them use them anyway because they're like, Still well, got, like, wow. Still like grimace on it. Yeah, you're like, well, I'll give, yeah, okay, we'll give you everything. Uh, 12 gift certificates worth $15. 12? 
15 each for each restaurant. So we got the, well, we won't go through the list of them, but okay, let's watch this. Hello everyone, we're back. Uh, we just finished watching the Romantic Restaurants of Edmonton, or the Romantic Restaurants that were once houses of Edmonton. Because <laughs> half of them used to be homes and they've now been converted. That is an accurate description. Yeah. It's literally just 18 minutes of... <laughs> we were counting. Some cheesy voiceover guy saying, Come to this restaurant, it's so nice. The chairs are beautiful. The food is great. The chairs were not beautiful. The food looked standard. Yeah. The chef is award winning. Doesn't really go into specifics of what that award is. Like when he was in kindergarten, he got like a spelling award or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that <laughs> counts, but we don't, we don't know. Um, but what we thought would be fun to do... Ooh. Is to throw the box on the floor. Throw the box. Uh, is to see if any of these restaurants is still open. Because it is... There's the list of restaurants, if you can see that. It has been 18 years at this point. So, restaurant business is a tough business. It's true. Yeah. And I can see why a tape like that exists. Because before TripAdvisor and stuff, that, yeah. that actually would entice me, maybe. I don't yeah, know. I, just, I, I just want to know how it was distributed. Yeah, and I'm wondering, like, how much would they sell it for? Because there's probably a hundred bucks-ish worth of coupons in there. So, it was how do you... According to this sticker that's underneath another sticker, Ooh. it was sold. This tape does not participate in today's sale. So I'm assuming it was for sale, but they they never discounted the price. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. We well, must have bought it from a Goodwill sign because there's a green oh, falling over. There's a green sticker which usually means one, you know, half sure. price or whatever. Um so yeah, okay. First restaurant is oh, the okay. the Crapery. The Crapery. Owned by Hans and Elizabeth Kunal is a unique and affordable French-style restaurant located in the heart of Edmonton on the boardwalk. It's easy to see why the Crapery has been voted the most romantic by several magazines and by the Edmonton Journal. I'm excited. Do you remember when we were in Paris and we went to the Crapery? I do remember that. Here's a video clip of us in the Crapery. What are you saying? It's exciting. We're in a crepery. You said it's a pancake house, but it's a crepery. That seems kind of fresh. Oh, yeah, That's crepes. exciting. Yeah. So, yeah, we're trying to dodge the rain, basically. It's fairly late. It's like 9 o'clock and we're out eating. It's the French way to do it. Yeah, apparently. I found the crepery. Mm -hmm. It's got two to four dollar signs, so it's an expensive place. So, obviously. It's still open. Yeah. It's That's open good. right now. That's good news. And it's got 250 reviews. It looks like it's about three and a half stars out of five. Okay, so that's one out of one that's open. What about Divine's? Divine's Restaurant and Lounge is located overlooking the River Valley at 9712 111th Street. The spectacular view from several dining areas on the main floor of this cozy renovated house, or from the just one more lounge on the second floor, is awesome. Closed! Ah, oh, when did it close? Wait, what day is it? Sunday. It's only closed because it's 7 o'clock at night and they close at 6 p.m. It's oh, still open! <laughs> is it 7 o'clock? How long have we been watching videos today? Oh, well, most of the day. Oh no! What? This location was reported closed! This is why I need to look at TripAdvisor! Is it closed or open? <sighs> and there's only one review for it. And that was back in 2007, so... Oh. Next one. Doucette's Dining and Conference Center. Doucette's, owned by Paul Doucette, is located at 10120 103rd Avenue on the second floor of the Canada Trust Tower. Plenty of underground parking is available. The newly renovated facility is versatile and can provide for a variety of functions in several beautifully appointed areas. Doucette's prides itself on creativity and meeting the needs of its guests. Doucette's is gone. We're going to say closed. Next up is Hemingway's. That's got to be an easy one to find. Two, no, one M. Hemingway's. Apostrophe M. Hemingway's Fine Dining and Spirits, set in a picturesque Victorian house, is located at 10942 124th Street and owned by Ron and Mary Ann Korn. Ample parking is available in the back and is wheelchair accessible. The ambiance in any restaurant is crucial to the dining experience. And at Hemingway's, they've created a warm and cozy atmosphere. 
The combination of antiques, paintings, books, and a fireplace makes dining at Hemingway's relaxing and romantic. Okay, I found a TripAdvisor for this one, though. And it's got five stars. And... Excellent dinner. I'm wondering if it's in the Caribbean, though? No, it's not in the Caribbean. Different, different climate. Hemingway's is shut, is my official conclusion. Hemingway's closed. Kazana, the uh, this was the Indian restaurant, wasn't it? With the romantic music played on sitar. Kazana's, Edmonton's only five-star authentic tandoori restaurant. The romantic ambiance created through lighting, music, three open fireplaces with brass and copper hoods, the pine and cedar beams, tapestries and rugs from India, and other decor from the 15th century Mughal period has to be experienced as it's impossible to adequately describe. It's designed like a Maharaja's palace with over $1.2 million spent on interior decor. Coming to the restaurant is truly like being in a different country. Okay, I spelled Kazakhstan, that's not right. But it auto-corrected and it looks like it exists. Oh my God, still open? Yes, and it's got four stars out of five. Ooh, good one, Kazana. Okay. La Bohim. La Bohème Restaurant, owned by Ernst Dieter, is located at 6427 112th Avenue in the historic Gibbard Block. This elegant, renovated house with five unique dining areas provides an ideal romantic setting for intimate dining experiences or for special occasions and functions. I love how the auto fill La Bohème Restaurant Edmonton haunted. <laughs> cool. Let's get advertised. Permanently closed because no. it's fucking haunted because there was a murder there. No. Speculation. La Ronde. Hey, La Ronde is the one at the top of a hotel that spins. So that one, if it's not closed, it's definitely just repurposed to something yeah, else. Yeah, because you wouldn't, yeah. La Ronde is Edmonton's only revolving rooftop restaurant and is situated at the top of the beautiful Crown Plaza Chateau Lacombe on Bellamy Hill. The perimeter where you'll be seated revolves completely every 90 minutes giving you a spectacular view of the river valley and city, whether dining during the day or evening. Yeah, look at that, it's else, still there. What else are you going to use it for? Rotating office space. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah, four and a half stars. Oh, it still exists. still going. Uh, Madison's Grill, Union Bank Inn. Madison's Grill is an elegant restaurant located in the historic Union Bank Inn at 10053 Jasper Avenue. Owner Diane Kyle Buchanan has spent over $5 million on the refurbishing and has created a restaurant with dramatic cathedral ceilings, contemporary architectural columns with natural lighting, and a showcase fireplace and bar. The commissioned artwork features Alberta artists. Voted one of Canada's top 100 restaurants, the menu features regional Canadian cuisine. Oh, I've got something for open table. Four stars out of five. Oh my God, these places are doing well. We're like half for half here. <laughs> uh, Nina's. Nina's looked okay. I don't feel good about Nina's because it's like, it sounds like a mom and pop type of thing, and those are the ones that tend to go under. Warm and elegant, filled with twinkling lights, Nina's restaurant is one of the most romantic dining rooms in the city of Edmonton. Owners Nina and Mario Skirpik had a vision to recreate the warmth and elegance of the dining rooms they loved so much in Europe. They, along with manager Chris Hernick, have achieved this in creating a restaurant that is affordably elegant. Nina's restaurant is closed. So, All right. You heard it here first. Norman's. Norman's, close to the city center, is located on Jasper Avenue and 116th Street. First class service, candlelight, and romantic collector's music are hallmarks of this 65-seater restaurant. Normand and Leslie Campbell, owners for 12 years, take pride in providing good food at good value. It's open! It's yes. open! It's got four and a half stars. Yes, keeping it up there. What about the Pradera Cafe and Lounge at the Westin? The award-winning Pradera Cafe and Lounge is located in the beautiful Westin Hotel in downtown Edmonton. The Pradera has recently undergone a transformation. Extensive refurbishment has given this prime site in the Westin an entirely new look and feel. 
The lighting is perfect, not too dark, but low enough to be intimate. The Spanish prairie theme, along with a large fireplace, create warm atmosphere ideal for intimate evenings, family get-togethers, business dinners, or special occasions. Ooh. In the Westin? Oh, I don't have this. Yeah, it's in the Westin? <gasps> Questionable, though. Oh, yeah, it's there. It's good. What's the... It's, I mean, out of, like, the 2,000 restaurants in Edmonton, it's, like, 1,068, so it's kind of in the Not middle. Not good Westin. Food is good, reasonably priced, and good sized portions. Okay, next. Right. <laughs> and the last one, the one we thought was best, V of A. V of A. This should be an easy one, I bet. I hope it's, oh, it doesn't look good. It doesn't. It's on a website called manta.com, so. Manta. <laughs> V of I is located in the West End at 9977 178th Street and is truly romantic. Specialty light fixtures, beautiful inlay flooring, tasteful paintings, and two magnificent copper and stainless steel palm trees will greet you as you enter this romantic restaurant. Master chef and co-owner Patrizio Sacchetto has been voted one of the top 10 chefs of America and his menu shows it. Color, taste, and breathtaking presentation of the food make dining at V of I's visual as well as a taste experience. They take great pleasure in the fact that everything served is fresh, never frozen. All food is prepared at the restaurant, including a variety of breads baked daily and fresh homemade pasta. The menu includes seafood, which is shipped fresh every two days, and regional games such as deer. Elegance and creativity are hallmarks of the foods offered at V of I. The manager and co-owner, Flora Carazza, wants all her guests to feel comfortable when they eat at V of I, like they're eating in their own dining room. V of I's is an ideal setting for special occasions or intimate dining experiences. If you'd like to have a private dinner party, there's a beautiful room available. Enjoy a taste experience you won't forget. Visit V of I soon. It's closed! Wow! The one we were actually going to go to so we could see those palm trees. See those metal palm trees. <sighs> so that was bad All then. Right. Kind of 50-50 really. As we said, the restaurant business is tough times. Always as even Gordon Ramsay's had restaurants that have shut down. Really? Yeah. Huh? And ones he's helped have shut down too. Yeah. So. Well, isn't the general consensus with those that if he's there it's like already too far gone? Yeah, I wouldn't trust one. If I if I if the restaurant opened up and it said, "Hey, Gordon Ramsay's been here to sort us out," I'm like, "Yeah." Like half the time when Gordon Ramsay does like the follow-up shows, they've just gone back to their old habits again, anyway. mm. or they've changed their menu to being shit. <laughs> so, so, so yeah, um, was it entertaining? Again, I think it was too short, really. To I mean, it's fun. To, it was quite fun to see the old. This is a hard stuff. one to rate it on because its purpose isn't really to entertain or make no, us it's giggle. No, advertise. So that's. I did laugh. There was one where they were trying to show off a restaurant and they're like a dirty old truck. <laughs> it was outside just ruining the shop. Like they do in all of Alberta. That might be a shutdown one. Who knows? I think it was. I think that was Nemus. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so again, too short to be entertained by it. Same as the camp one. Well. We have watched some short things that have been entertaining, but for this purposes, yeah. Okay. But it did, I think it did serve its purpose, though, because yeah. I got very educated on these places. And yeah, it did serve its purpose. Would you watch it again? Fuck no. That's what uh, TripAdvisor is for. No, probably not either for me. I'd like to see an update. I'd watch it again if there was like a series. <laughs> what was the thing that it was made by? Like Kabira or something like that? Kabira. Maybe they... The, oh, the company the that made the it. The production. Maybe they're still releasing them with the coupons. <clears throat> Maybe. Who knows? Weirdly enough, they didn't have their name plastered all over it. Oh, yeah, they do. Curb and Mead Multimedia. There you go. So, may, I would probably watch it again if we were going to go to Edmonton and we needed to eat out. And we thought, hey, it'd be quite nice to see, like, to compare what it looked like in 2000 to what it looks like now. That would be quite fun. Ooh. Does that mean we're keeping it? Because it did serve its purpose and you would relaunch it. Uh, I'm going to keep it, yes. Just because one day we may go to Edmonton. 
and we may want to track down. Hmm, I'd be okay with that. So yeah, we'll keep one, we're chucking away one. It's all good. Uh, yeah, by the way, if anyone, uh, anyone in this video that wants this video, if you're local, feel free to come and get it. I'll give it to Value Village and you can go and buy it from them. For 99 cents. We're done! Yay! Thanks all for watching, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>